Pausing in casual video games is important. You never know what's going on while someone is playing and there could be a laundry list of reasons as to why they might need to take a sudden break. And this is no different in fighting games. Even more so, in fact, as this is where players will find important features such as the command list, options, and more. The problem here is that when we're talking about fighting game tournaments, pausing is explicitly not allowed. As a competitor going outside of the match itself to interrupt the set in the middle of a round is against the rules and typically results in disqualification or a round forfeit. Contrary to how this sounds, tournament matches being suddenly interrupted by pauses is all too frequent of a problem, and as you might guess, can cause some disastrous moments, as there is never a good time to have a high level or high stakes competitive match be suddenly paused out of nowhere. It's bad for the players, bad for the viewers, the commentators, the organisers, Okay, it sucks for everyone, but it does make for some memorable moments. Just maybe sometimes not for the right reasons. We are Ketchup and Mustard, and we're going to highlight five instances where a sudden unintentional pause caused complete chaos in tournament. If you like what you see here and want to stay up to date on our uploads and various fighting game related content, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to never miss a thing. Number 5. KIT 2017 Killer Shinnok vs Samij There's a lot to be said about the topic of matches being interrupted by the kinds of things in this video in general, but the example you're about to see is maybe the most common. This match was Killer Shinnok vs Samij in Mortal Kombat X at Kumite in Tennessee 2017. Both players were on the top of their game, doing well in the event, and this was a match that everyone was super excited to see. The format was first to three, and Samij was up two games to zero. Things weren't looking good for Killer Shinnok, but he would go up a round in game three, and then confirm a hit to take the momentum. And then... All right, okay. size on him. Like Trying that. to keep the space right where he wants it. Yeah. Oh. Whoa! And that is at the fault of the players, but luckily yeah. they're going to get right through it. You, you it was in the middle of a the mansion. controllers. Yes. Okay, looking Ooh, good, looking good. And tried something there. Maybe that's what he was Look trying. At that. And this is now the second time. This is the fault of the players. It's the fault I am of the players. I'm going to blow them up. It is and the fault of the players. Whoa! Putting the PS4 in the rest mode. Wow! Who did, someone did that on purpose. Wow! That's, that's, a, wow. that's hilarious. Someone just did that on purpose. Wow! Wow. This is what I mean when I say that this was common. This right here, players using wireless controllers on a station, the following players not desyncing them, and then the previous player tries playing on a different machine and boom, they've interrupted a match. The worst thing about this though, is not only did we see the interrupt happen once, it then happened again, and then they literally turned the console off. I still to this day don't think anyone knows who did it, and I'm pretty sure it was an accident. The match was promptly restarted with the round up to kill a Shinnok, and Samij would eventually take the set 3-1. to one. But if there's ever an example of getting in the habit of disabling previous wireless devices before you sit down to play on stream, let this be it. Number 4. Southeast Asia Major 2019 Fenriti vs Noble Next up is a bit of BB Tag, which funnily enough is actually the first time we've covered this series in any way on this channel, but I do wish it were for a more positive reason as this is a classic example of how a good old fashioned pause button can be a huge problem at the worst time. This was grand finals between Fenrich and Noble, two strong players to be sure, but Fenrich in particular was coming into this after a hard earned win in Dragon Ball Fighters at the same tournament, which is where many of the more modern FGC crowd will recognize him from, and he was looking confidently poised to take his second first place at the same event. Not only was this grand finals, but it was also part of the Arxis World Tour, which is the Arc System Works World Tour. Basically the world championship for fighting games made by Arxis. Previously seen with Blaze Blue Central Fiction, and even in 2022 will be featuring Guilty Gear Strive and DNF Duel. It's a big deal, and definitely something you'll feel close to when you're sitting in a grand final for one of its events. Noble would find himself down two games, but was relatively even in the third. That was until, well, this happened. Day for this, you can't just end it in 45 oh, seconds. Jesus. He got this thing. Oh, it was the um the b -b 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 division with the pad players. The pad player. One of the pad players it? got him. No one's freaking out. Cut the feed. Cut the feed. <laughs> the match was paused, and suddenly confusion everywhere to be seen. Neither players or commentators knew what caused it. 
but after a few minutes of talk with the admins, it was discovered that unfortunately it was Noble who accidentally hit the pause button on the face of his stick. And as specifically stated in the rules, the match had to be given to his opponent. And thus, Fenrich would win 3-0 and would end the tournament right there. Credit where it's due though, as Fenrich was winning convincingly in the set as is, it's hard to assume the set would have ended any other way. But ultimately, we'll never know. Uh, I mean, uh, DQ. He beat him fair and square. Fair and square. It's fair in the and square. It's in the rules. You don't press pause. Number three, Nightmare SF versus Godspeed, Evo 2013. Perhaps a lesser known example here, but one that deserves its spot in the list completely, due to the position in the bracket it was and what it means to most fighting game competitors. Let's go back to EVO 2013, just shy of 10 years ago saw the debut year of Injustice Gods Among Us, the newest franchise by Netherrealm Studios and their follow-up game to the hugely successful MK9. This was an all-new fighting game that saw one of the largest mixed bags of players from all sorts of other fighting games at this very EVO. EVO wasn't too long after the game came out and typically experienced fighting game players learn new games very quickly, so all eyes were on this tournament to see who would make the ever idolized top 8 spot in this breakout year. Now fast forward to the top 16, where we see Godspeed, who you may know from the MKX Pro League commentary desk in future years, versus Nightmare SF. Nightmare SF was definitely an unfamiliar face to the offline community at this time and was a prominent Batman player in the world of ranked matches, always seen playing and usually high on the leaderboards in terms of overall matches played. This was a definite example of an online warrior taking a step into the world of offline. Unfortunately with it came one of the problems that online doesn't suffer from. Pausing the match online, unintentionally or otherwise, doesn't actually stop the match. The same however cannot be said for offline, as we tragically saw a pause happen in the very last match of the set. Black Adam with that pressure. Oh, oh no! Oh, oh no! It didn't help matters that there was no confusion whatsoever as to who the pause came from, as Injustice literally tells you in writing who paused it. And given the circumstances as the winner of this match makes EVO top 8, Godspeed took the win and advanced forward in the bracket. Long assumed to have simply been an unfortunate hardware error, this one definitely sucks to see given the gravity of what the placement was at stake. Number 2, Gamer B vs Momochi EVO 2015. Okay, be honest, you all knew this one was coming, and why wouldn't it? Oh, this one really hurts to watch back. Oh, man. <sighs> right, all right, okay. EVO 2015, Gamer B versus Momochi. Ultra Street Fighter 4, Grand Finals, last game of the event, packed out ballroom. Ketchup and I are watching in person as this is the same event that he got the top 8 for in MKX and we are pumped to watch this final as we were super into Street Fighter 4 as fans at the time. As is the entire thousands and thousands strong crowd. It's part of the Capcom Pro Tour, Street Fighter 4 at EVO always delivers the hype and it is a highlight of the year for countless fans worldwide. The set begins, Momochi's in winners, Gamer B is in losers. They begin and deliver some of the best Street Fighter 4 we have ever seen. The set goes on for over 30 minutes. Gamer B has reset the bracket. We're at the final stretch. It's game five. We're about to crown an EVO champion. And... Point from Momochi. He has to win these two rounds. Oh, no. No. No, James. No, James. Not like this. Not like this. Oh, it's just so awful, isn't it? Like, I feel so bad for them, I can't describe it. This was hands down the worst time for anything like this to happen, and it did. You can see it in their faces, it's just so heartbreaking, and I really can't put it into words any better than Seth Killian can, honestly. No, no, James. No, James, not like this. I was there, and believe me, the dismay you hear from the audience in the video really doesn't do it justice. Everyone just felt so bad for Momochi and Gamer B, and it turns out that it was Momochi's stick just disconnecting itself for no reason. After much discussion, the admins awarded the round to Gamer B, and they played out the final round, ultimately leading to Momochi taking the tournament. This will always be the most heartbreaking to me as it truly felt like a complete one in a million situation. Neither player physically hit pause, no external player interrupted, nothing. It was just a random hardware malfunction out of nowhere. Ugh, so unfortunate. Number 1, Ryan Hart vs Gandido, Evo 2008. 
There is a reason I've left this until last. I figured we'd all be feeling rather sad after the previous entry and thought this video should end on a positive note. This is my favourite example of a pause happening in a match as it becomes a feel good moment where so many others end up just being plain miserable. Once again, it's EVO, 2008 to be exact. So we're going back back for this one, but that's because it's the grand finals for Tekken 5 featuring video game Hall of Famer Ryan Hart facing off against Gandido. Another instance of a last game situation, once again the unthinkable happens and someone hits the home button, interrupting the final match of the grand final. Hell's feet, right hard with the comeback. Tap. No! As Reinhardt's device didn't have a home button, the judges assumed that it must have been Gandido at fault and were about to award the tournament to Ryan on the back of it. However, this is where he showed arguably one of the greatest displays of sportsmanship the FGC had seen at the time and he refused the win, firmly requesting that the match be replayed again as he didn't want to win on a technicality. I spoke to Reinhardt about this and it's probably best to hear a quote from him here. Everyone looked lost and confused when the pause happened, me included. It was the final game at 2-2 and the final round of the first set. I was in the winner's bracket. The judges deemed my opponent wrong and were about to award me the win and the EVO trophy. I stood up and said, no, not like this. Let us replay the match. I don't want to win this way. The judges then let us replay the match as I refused to accept the win like that. Ryan then proceeded to win the rematch and secure his first place in Tekken 5 at that year's EVO, reminding us all why he is one of the greatest and my personal FGC hero. It was then discovered months down the line that it wasn't actually Gandido's stick that pressed the home button, it was someone in the crowd, so this story could very well have gone a different direction had it not been for Reinhardt's sportsmanship in hindsight. And that's five instances of a pause causing chaos in tournaments. Quite a mixed selection, I know, but it never gets easier to deal with. And when you're next at a tournament, make sure to delete those wireless devices, enable pause delay if it exists, make sure your USB cable is up to scratch, and generally do anything sensible to avoid this happening to you at a future event.